If you want to look back at the legacy of rowing at the University of Washington, just look up. This is the shell. This is the shell. This, this is, is the, the shell clipper. from 36? Yes. One seat is sacred to Judy Rance Willman. Her dad, Joe Rance, was part of the Husky team that won gold at the 1936 Olympics in Nazi Germany. What do you think he would think of all of this? Well, like I said, he was basically a humble person. He didn't want the story to be just about him. He wanted it to be about the boat. The story, based on the best-selling book, The Boys in the Boat, will now play out on the big screen as a movie directed by George Clooney. That bunch of kids moved like no one else that's ever come through here. Everybody else tires and just gets stronger. The book chronicles challenges the boys faced as college students during the Depression. Many, like Rance, fought for a spot on the team because it came with food and a job. And I thought it was a cinematic story because it's a real, you know, you're going to beat the seniors, you're going to beat the elite schools, and then you're going to beat Hitler. It's a pretty good story. It's a story Judy was desperate to tell. Luckily, her neighbor is author Daniel James Brown. You know, these are real people whose lives I'm, I'm talking about, so it becomes important to get them right on a personal level. The pair spent six years researching and writing the book. I didn't want his name forgotten. I didn't want to lose who he was. But that hard-fought gold medal was lost for years. Where were you keeping the gold medal? Well, a squirrel had taken it. But there's some places where you actually see what looks like the scrapey marks. <laughs> the Conover Shell House at UW is now a shrine to that former time. Joe's granddaughter, Jennifer Huffman, who's now a rower herself, understands why the story still resonates today and doing what you need to do for yourself, but then also being able to pull that back and become part of something bigger than yourself is, is something that is always going to be powerful. Joe passed away in 2007 before the book was finished. Beyond bestseller and the silver screen, it's a message of love from a daughter to yeah. her dad. <laughs> I think it's done an amazing job of doing that. I don't think he's going to be forgotten. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'm Lee Stoll, Como News. I've been following the story for years because I've been friends with Judy and with Jennifer Huffman, wow. Joe's family for years, um, following the shoots and ladders, the ups and downs of trying to get this to this point. So I guess my first question would be, why save a script like this? Well, you know, we, I read the book when it came yeah. out, and I loved it. And I thought it was a cinematic story, because it's a real, you know, you're going to beat the seniors, you're going to beat the elite schools, and then you're going to beat Hitler. It's a pretty good story. But I didn't know, it, it was, it, this went through many different iterations. Many different people had their hands on it. He's seen, a, he, he'd been through it, he, you know. And then suddenly we got a hold of it. And we had a, a studio that was willing to make it and help us to put it together and then it was just came up came down to can we cast eight kids that can row which was, was tricky that a requirement? well they none of them had ever rowed before okay which was a disaster and by the way we trained them for yeah. like five months but the first after a month of them training every day they said come on out and see how they're doing they had an olympic terry the olympic uh, gold medalist just training them and when we finished i literally got in the car with my buddy grant we were like this is a, this is a disaster these, it was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And uh, so we, we scheduled all of the rowing for the very end of the movie <laughs> and trained them the whole time. Yeah. And by the end, they got a town. They were really good. Oh, good. And then with the group itself, you have ensemble cast movies, you know, a long legacy of those, but usually with A-listers, I don't want to insult anybody, but usually the actors here pretty much are on par. They're on the same level. Was she, was she's that? Calling, she's calling our actors uh -huh. like B-listers. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that intentional? Knowing that this was supposed to be a book and a story about a group coming together, not one necessarily individual. You don't have a Radcliffe. You don't have a Hemsworth. In the I list. don't have I don't have any of the Hemsworths, and there's several. Of them. There are there's plenty like three, to choose from. Five, six of those. No, we, you know, the, the, the reality was you want to have it be young, uh, sort of not all that well-known actors, although some of them are Jack people know and people knew Callum a little bit. But the reality is we had to train them for a long period of time. They had to have the time to do it. 
and the and the willingness to do it. But you know, actors do that. That's what they do. So it was honestly the only decisions were about getting the right actors for the right parts. Mm -hmm. you know? Is there a, a conscientious choice for projects for you? What is what you choose as an actor versus a director? Yeah. If I if I'm too old to play the part, I'll direct it. Um, I think it's usually the plan. Yeah, I was actually hoping you'd play Ulbrichsen, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Ulbrichsen, uh, no, when we got Joel Edgerton, I was yeah, very yeah, happy was with that. Yeah, um, yeah look, I, there are films that I've written uh, for myself to be, like, Good Night and Good Luck and Eyes of March and parts like that that I wrote for me to be in because I wanted to tell those stories. But for the most part, uh, it's a lot more fun to be on the other side and let them... Is it really? Sure. Yeah. Is, you well, think about it this way. Acting is one of the paints in a, in a painting, and directing is the painter. You know, you use sound and, and music and acting and visual effects and everything and put, and put a story together. And you get to have a part in all of it. And you get to be the boss of a lot of people. Yeah. Get <laughs> to yell at people. Yeah, yeah. And you've been through this, of course, through the years, um, putting this book together with Judy, your next door neighbor. Did this really go from coffee table to Clooney? I mean, this must have been a unique experience. Yeah, over, over experience, <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> it took, yeah, it took a while, but um, yeah, no, it's been great. I mean, first of all, working with Judy, couldn't have written a book without Judy. She had, was the repository of all things Joe Rance. She had spent the last couple years of his life taking notes, saving his stuff asking him very detailed questions that she then recorded. So I had this treasure trove for the Joe Rance character. I had this treasure stove trove of stuff to work with. And then she also introduced me to the family members of all the other guys in the boat. So it took a couple of years just to sort of meet everybody and get my hands around the story. Um, but yeah, without Judy, couldn't have done it. And Joe well, was- well, Let me also say, because he's always very modest about this. This is a, an extraordinary piece of literature and Without Dan, nothing, none of this happens, right? Because it's it's an amazing story about you know a bunch of kids who got together because they needed to and, and rode and won the gold. Um, we've seen stories kind of like that in, in the history of time. He made it a very special story about these young men. So Thank that, you. that's she has certainly praised you as well. That she says it was it was a hand of fate that you just happened to be her neighbor and that she could come across to you. Yeah and put this story together because with tears in her eyes, she just didn't want this forgotten. She didn't yeah. want her father forgotten. Yeah, well, it was very important to me. Um, I mean, Judy was very emotional as we were working right. together on this. It was very important to me to get her dad's character right. And then as I went on, it was very important to me as, you know, these are real people whose lives I'm, I'm talking about. So it becomes important to get them right on a personal level or to do the best you can with what you have. So um, it's kind of burden, but I'm, I'm really glad that the families have all been and you're no stranger to his story stories, but to find one in Seattle, I mean, we're basically Southern Canada to most of the country. You know, <laughs> right. we aren't the place where history comes from. Right. To find a story like this with this kind of touchstone to the University of Washington, to our city, right. how does that make you feel that there actually was something to tell about this area? Well, that was part of what was so cool about the story, it's especially in the 1930s, people on the East Coast, particularly people in rowing circles, mm -hmm. which tended to be, you know, prep school kids and so forth. Rich. Very rich. Um, they literally didn't know where Seattle was. And if they thought about Seattle at all, they thought we were living, I don't know, in log cabins or something out here. So I didn't realize until I started reading the Eastern newspapers how prevalent that view was in the 30s of the West Coast. So as a Westerner, um, it felt good to uh, sort of get that part of the story in there give us a bit of a reflection. If I have just a little more time, I wanted to ask two specific questions because the movie being filmed in England, mm -hmm. the backdrop is a little bit different than what we see out here, yeah. but there is something that you built to the T, a perfect replica. If people are watching the movie, what are they gonna see that- You're gonna see the, the boathouse. I mean, it was, it, it was such a tragedy after we built it that we had to take it apart mm -hmm. because it was such a beautiful piece of architecture. And I'm very excited that they're, and whatever way anybody can do to help uh, continue to uh, to renovate this incredible old airplane hangar, uh, beautiful boathouse. That was a, we were very excited to be able to, to build it. And the last question, although you were able to build the boathouse, there might be something missing from the movie. I haven't seen it yet, but talking to Judy, Jennifer, people who have, the one question they do have is, where is the rain? 
<laughs> it rained. Are you kidding, London? <laughs> it rains every day in London. No, you know, the funny thing was, and it was, a, it was a very active choice. We came here and we looked at everything. And the problem is that Seattle doesn't look like Seattle in 1936. And so we had to find places that were, had less buildings on them and be able to shoot like that. So that was the only reason, because the weather in, in London is fairly similar to yeah. the weather here. Yeah.